Good morning and welcome to New Beginnings House of Worship as we come to worship a live and a living God. We thank you for being here with us this morning. Uh, God has such a wonderful blessing before us. It's nice and sunshiny here. I don't know what the weather is there with you, but it is still a blessing to whether it's raining or sun shining, that God is replenishing the earth. And so we just thank you for being here with us as we come to worship God in spirit and in truth. We're going to ask Sister Rosalind Turner to come at this moment and give us our morning welcome. Sister Rosalind. Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to New Beginnings House of Worship. We are so happy that you are joining us this morning and that God has blessed you and have opened your eyes to let you see another beautiful day. And we just thank him for his many, many blessings. We pray that you have a beautiful day today and that you will just find something that's going to help you along your journey this week. And we know that God is just going to do it, help you in a mighty, mighty way. So we just invite you to just come in and just simmer on the word, simmer on the word of God, because he truly do has a message for you. We want to say a happy, happy birthday to my brother-in-law, George. He is celebrating his birthday on today. And we just want to wish all of those July babies, you only have a few more days this week to celebrate your birthday this week. And so we want to uh, say happy birthday to all of you. And, and then maybe my cousin Ronza finished celebrating her birthday for the month. Um, but we want to say happy birthday to all the remaining July babies this week and anniversary. So we pray that God just be with you. And remember, well, the thought for this week is that God has not given us a spirit of fear. So all that rhetoric that you may hear out there from people that want to lead the country and everything else, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And we can trust in him and know that he is still in control, no matter what is going on around us. So have a beautiful week. Have a blessed day. And we just pray that we'll just enjoy the service. Thank you. Pass the turnip seat. Amen. Amen. So we thank you for being here with us and know that God has not given us a spirit of fear. And we need to operate in that and all that God has set for us. God has a word for us today, and uh, again, we want to send a shout out to my brother for his birthday today. Happy birthday to you, bro, and uh, all you that are celebrating, as Sister Rosalind mentioned. And so today's message, today's message, remember, we're still dealing with our theme, living out God's plans, living out God's plans. And so as we look into God's word today, um, we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel, <clears throat> excuse me, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18, and we're going to begin our reading right at about verse 20. Ezekiel um, chapter 18, beginning at verse 20. We're going to read verses 20 through 23, and then we're going to move to verses 31 and 32 for our message today. I'll be reading from the King James Version, but whatever version of the Bible you have, make sure you get that out and keep it out and hear what God is saying to us throughout this message. The Word of God says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked shall, should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? Verses 31 and 32. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Amen. Amen. And so just for a thought today, <coughs> we want to title this message, Turn and Live. Turn and Live. 
And so as we think about this message today, we want you to uh, consider this biblical truth for this message today. This biblical truth for the, today is God wants everyone to live in eternity, but the choice is yours. Turn and live. God wants everyone to live in eternity, but the choice is yours. Turn and live. When we think about this message today, and it really uh, plays on the a proverb that the people in Israel would, was saying, and you, get, you can pick that up in Jeremiah when they first started talking about it or in Scripture that God brought it before them because the people were saying these, you know, these old sayings that people would have. And so they'd say, the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Meaning that uh, the things that the father's done they ate the sour grapes. They, they're the ones who dealt with the, the bad thing. But the children are suffering the consequence of eating those sour grapes because their teeth are set on edge. Or in other words, the iniquities of the fathers are on the children. And, you know, we, we talk about some things as far as generational things and families and uh your grandfather and your father was this way and you're going to be that way too or you're going to suffer the same thing and you're going to go through uh, what your dear daddy did. You're going to end up just like him. You're going to be just like your mama and all of these things. And, and sometimes we say those things and out of anger because of the person and, and parents telling their children, you're going to be just like your old no good daddy. You're going to be just like your old sorry mama. And all of that stuff. You know, people put that on children and make them as though they're going to suffer the consequences of what their parents have gone through. But it takes us to this whole concept of the choices we make. Choices we make. You know, we go through life and uh, situations happen, things come up, but we have the choice to do right or to do wrong, how we handle it. And in God's word, God's word tells us how we're to handle each other, how we're supposed to love our neighbors, ourselves, uh, love our enemies, how we're supposed to walk in the spirit. And we hear those things that, yeah, but yeah, no, they got on my nerves. So maybe you're that person where someone made you mad and you chose to strike out in anger. anger. They made you mad. You were upset. And you were determined that you're going to show them and get back at them and show them that you're the person, you're the man, you're the woman in the, in the office, you're the queen, you're the king, you're the ruler. Nobody's going to come in here and treat me like that or say that to me. And you chose to strike out in anger. Someone told you something juicy. Mm, you just really had to hear it. You were listening to it and it sounded good. And in and, and, and that listening to it, then you chose to spread it to someone else. You know, and they come up to you, tell you something. Uh, well, no, you didn't hear this from me, but. And then, now, there are some instances where people are trying to inform you of some things that are happening to keep you from trouble. But a lot of times when it's something juicy, something's gossip, something someone did or something it's someone is supposed to have done or you heard from somebody else that this happened or you saw somebody somewhere and you thought they shouldn't have been there with that person and you're assuming something going on. You don't know if that's a family member or not. And you, now you're going around telling them he was with some woman or she was with some man. You don't know who that person was, but you spreading it. It sounded juicy. And then you choose to spread it on to someone else. Gossip, rumors and lies. The choices we make. Maybe it was that somebody uh, had a lot of money and they, they left it sitting out and you were sitting there and time passed and you decided you're going to take it. You chose to take it. You can say, well, it was sitting out there. It was just laying around. Or maybe you heard somebody had something and you knew they had it in their, their wallet and they set their wallet over there, or over here, or whatever the case may be. When you chose to take it, you become the thief. Maybe you say you found it on the ground. You over somebody's house and in their backyard, you found money in their backyard and you just are going to pick it up and go with it and not give it to the person. You chose the choices that we make. And so in this message today, we need to understand this whole concept of turning to live. Turn and live. Tell yourself, 
return and live. And so there's some things that God has for us in this message. And the first one is that the soul that sins. God wants us to get this message. The soul that sins. We've all committed sins. And we've none of us are innocent, free of sin. We've all sinned. And so we need to pay attention to this. The soul that sins, verse 20. We are responsible for the seeds that we sow. We all are. Whatever that it may be and however inconsequential it seemed, that we are responsible for those seeds that we sow. Even for the good seeds that we sow. <laughs> it don't always have to be bad seed. Look at verse 20. It says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Let's just stop right there for a minute. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And so when we know that sin came into the world, wouldn't it be good if Adam just would not have listened to what Satan said and just did what God told him to do? And I hear some of you out there, well, he's the one who ate the apple and gave it to him. And well, he, Adam should have done what was right still. God spoke to him and told him what the consequences were. God said, in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. But what is it? It's just like in all of our lives. Who's the one telling us that it's okay to do it when God says it's not? That's the adversary. Hasatan, the adversary, Satan, the evil one, the liar, the father of lies. And we listen to everything that Satan says and we end up in a deadly situation. And so we see this and we read this. We know that everybody, um, unless the rapture comes and you're here when the rapture happens, everybody's going to die. So what does he mean? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You can say, well, everybody's going to die, so it don't matter. No, here he's dealing with the second death. See, yes, we're all born into sin. We're all meant to die. This fleshly body just is going to live forever. But God has eternity set for us. God wants everyone to live in eternity, but the choice is yours. Why don't you turn and live? And so the second death, if you read Revelation, it talks about the second death. After God, when Jesus comes and God and the heavenly host appears and then the judgment and then comes the second death. The second death is only meant for Satan and his uh, uh, fallen angels and hell. But guess what? Some of us, some people are going to be in the second death where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth and there's going to be fire and burning for eternity. That's not living, that's death. Eternal death. The second death. And so he says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Stop listening to what Satan's telling you about your situation. Oh, that's not that bad. You know nothing's going to happen as long as you, you two keep it on the low. As long as you keep it on the low. As long as you don't tell anybody else. Nobody saw you, Moses. No one saw you, Adam. But then Adam goes and hide. Moses got kicked out because God saw him. God knows your faults and your failures. The second death. But guess what? No one has to suffer for their family's sins. Isn't that good news? Look what it says. It says, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, and neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. We don't have to worry about that old proverb about the fathers eating sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. No, they're just because something, somebody in your family was wrong and they did all of these things doesn't mean that you're going to suffer the consequences for that. Someone told you that. You don't have to listen to it. Just because other people say this about your family that, or that about your family. Those generational curses that we talk about. That, that, that whole family has been no good and all of them going to be. Every, all the boys in that family were just no good men. They were there this. All the women were just hanging out there on the street and doing all kind of lewd things. All of them are like that. They're just loose women and all of this stuff. No one suffers for their family's sin. So the choice is yours. What choice will you make? How are you going to live your life now? It says, the son shall not bear the iniquities of the father, 
and nor shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Just because your son was all bad and went out there and robbed and steal doesn't mean that you're a bad daddy. Maybe you told them what to do and, and they went that way anyway. You don't have to bear the iniquities, the, the consequences of what that child has done, nor for anybody else in your family. So don't let anybody tell you because so-and-so was this way or that way in your family that you're going to be that way. Parents, stop saying that about your children. Your daddy was no good and you're going to be no good. Your mama was loose and you're going to just be low, loose thing. No. Encourage them. That's why people talk about words of affirmation for their children and their grandchildren. But what are you sowing? Are you sowing righteousness or are you sowing wickedness? The choice is yours. Look what it says in verse 20. It goes on to say, The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever you've done, and what, however you're living your life, if you're living a righteous life, then that, was, that is what's going to be upon you when it comes to the judgment seat, when God finally brings all of us together, and we're sitting there, standing there before the judgment seat. <laughs> And God is going to judge us based on what we have done. Our righteousness will stand for us or our wickedness, if we continue in wickedness, will stand there. Mm. The soul that sins, it shall die. You have the gift given to you to free you from the second death. What choice are you going to make? Well, this brings us to the second thing that God wants us to see in this message. Not only about the soul that sins, there's that warning they did, letting you know that there are some things that happen and you need to make sure you're living right. But the second thing that God has for us is hope for the wicked. That's good news, hope for the wicked. There is hope, there is hope. If it's, it's good to know that God extends hope to the sinner. Because we were all lost in our sins. We've all done some things. We've all been sinners. We've all done things that weren't right. But isn't it good news to know that there's hope in your wickedness? That you can turn, be turned, tell yourself to turn and live. The choice is yours. You have to make that decision. God gives us an all or none proposition. It's all or none. You don't come in here halfway. Don't come in here acting like you can do a little bit of good here and a little bit of good there and hang on to your bad over there and keep that to yourself. Look, I'm not, go, I'm not hurting nobody else by doing this. Yes, you are. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting those that are looking up to you. Turn from all your sins. Look at verse 21. It says, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed. That's the first thing we want to deal with. You need to turn from all your sins. You can't hang on to a little bit of something. You know, that little thing that you do that, well, you know, I've, I've stopped doing this. I stopped doing that. But, you know, this this little thing that I do, yeah, that, that, that's my little personal time. I'm just going to do that and not, not worry about anybody else. If it's a sinful thing, then you need to cut it out. You need to remove it. Turn from all your sins. Now, be careful because here we go. We start with our little list of things. Uh, you, uh, you drink, you smoke, you do this, you do that, and, and those are sins, and you go into hell for that. And God is not dealing with us from a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 checklist. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. You do that. Let love be the key in all the things that you do and see won't you do what's right. When you start reading God's word and, and, and learning what are the things that he would have us to do, you will make it through all that God has. Look what he goes on to say. He tells us to keep all of his statutes. It says in verse 21, but if the wicked would turn from all his sins that he has committed, you've got to turn from all your sins. You can't leave something hanging. And then he says, and keep all my statutes. Isn't that good news? God has given us a roadmap. That's the good news. You always want to follow a roadmap. You want to follow the GPS. And you're saying, this GPS is not as good as that one. And this one's better. It doesn't send you down the wrong road. Well, guess what? When you keep God's statutes, that GPS, 
<laughs> will keep you on track. The geo positioning uh, satellite. Well, you need God's position satellite. God's positional satellite is very is right here with us when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. It it guides us and leads us. God said, my word would be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. Keep all of my statutes. See, here's that all or none proposition. You have to get rid of all your sins and you need to keep all of my statutes. Now, here you go. So say, see, that's, that's it. You just told us we don't need to do all this one, two, three, four, five. Well, guess what? Again, once again, Jesus made it clear. No, you don't need to do all that checklist, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You need to just do this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Did you hear what I said? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's all that God asks of us. Uh, don't you know, in, in Micah, he says, uh, all that is required of us is to do justly, to love mercy, and work, walk humbly with our God. And if we would do that, justice, if you want justice, then you need to love the Lord, the God, your God, with all your heart, mind, and soul. And you know how to treat your neighbor. You will be just in your decisions. You will love mercy because you, when you deal with your neighbor and you love them as yourself, then you will be merciful because you know there are some things that you have done. And in order to do all of that, you have to walk with God humbly. You can't lift yourself up and try to think that you know all the things that, that are out there. Let God guide you. And then he tells us to do the right thing and live. Look at what he, <laughs> look at, look at what he says in verse 21. He goes on and says, and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. He shall not die. See, here we go again. What did God say in the, in the garden? He told us the day you eat of this, you will surely die. Now he's telling us, if you do these things, if you keep my statutes, do right, do that which is lawful and what is right, follow my statutes, and guess what? You will live. You will live. You don't have to fear the second death. You don't have to worry about the soul that sinned. You don't have to worry about the things that you used to do and how are those things still on my record. None of your sins will be mentioned again. Look at what he says in verse 22. All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned. More good news. The soul that sins and the, the, the hope for the wicked. This is it. This is it. This is rounding it up. It's an all or none proposition. And if you do it, guess what? None of your sins will be mentioned again if you truly hold to God's word and do the things that he has asked you to do. Follow his statutes. Listen to him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Do what is lawful and right. Stop trying to cheat and skin and, and uh get away with things and, and get over on somebody else. You're saying, well, that's not one of the commandments, is it? Yeah, you're cheating, you're stealing, you're robbing from somebody when you're trying to do some things and cut, take shortcuts all the way through life. Do what is lawful and right. And none of your sins will be mentioned again. Because when you turn, and that turning is repentance. And we're going to get into that before I get too far ahead of myself. None of your sins will be mentioned again. And then look what he says in verse 23. God has no pleasure in death. God doesn't want anyone to die. Hell was not meant for us. The lake of fire was not meant for us. <clears throat> lake of fire is where as I mentioned earlier, Satan and all his de uh, demon angels, fallen angels, and hell was meant to be consumed in the lake of fire. <clears throat> but because we decided to listen to what Satan says, we allow sin to, to flourish in our life, we continue to be wicked, then those things will come against us. God has no pleasure in death. Verse 23 says, all his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned. Oh, that's verse 22. I'm sorry. And then God goes on and says, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should, should die? That's a question God is asking you. And guess what? Anytime God asks a question like that, you know to listen to what he has to say. And because whatever he says is right. Don't you try to figure it out for yourself. 
Because somebody will say, yeah, <clears throat> why, well, you let so-and-so die. My grandmama died. <clears throat> she was 93 years old, and she blessed the family, and you took her away from us. Well, she lived a nice, long life. Somebody might be saying, well, my three-year-old child died. Why did you take him away, God? That You must have had some kind of pleasure in that because I don't know why you would take him away. God doesn't have pleasure in that anyone should die. But guess what? We all will die this death of the flesh. But guess what? <clears throat> we don't have to die that second death. And so God asked the question again, have I any pleasure that the wicked should die? We think that all evil people should die. They were bad and they did this. We don't want to, we're like Jonah. We don't like those people over there. And there's such division in this country today and around the world that people are trying to divide everyone and, and come up and saying, we want to be like it used to be. We want to make our country like it used to be. What, 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 what did it used to be? Aren't we great still? Isn't God still moving and operating? Why do we want to go back to, to old ways and do things the way it used to be? What, what is it that we want to do? What are we saying? What are we saying about what God is doing right now and, and God is, is encouraging all of us to do? If we would look and live, <laughs> if we would just turn and live, guess what? If we turn from our wicked ways, God will do what is right. And so he says, have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live. Tell yourself, turn and live. Some of you are living on the edge right now. Some of you are still doing some things and you know it's not right and, and you're just now thinking, I don't know if I can stop now. I don't know if I'll be accepted now. P too many people know what I've done. Well, don't worry about what everybody else knows. Know that God says, none of your sins will be mentioned again. If you just turn and live, if you just be obedient to my statues and be lawful and right, no matter what you've done in your life. And that brings us to the last thing that God wants us to say, uh, wants us to all see this morning. And that is the joy of repentance. The joy of repentance. Mm. When we turn from our evil ways, we really begin to experience true joy. You think things are going well for you now. You think you're happy and everything's going well. Well, sin is still in your life. No, it's not. You want to experience real joy? Then look into God's word and turn and repent of your sins, no matter how wicked you are. <clears throat> the only thing that keep you from being saved is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So no matter what it is that you are guilty of <clears throat> in your past, no matter what you've done this morning, God says, I will not mention them if you turn and live. Look at, look at what it says in verse 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Put away all the sinful acts of the past. If we mentioned that earlier in verses 21, 22, when he says, uh, all of your sins, put them away, turn from those things. Uh, you got to stop doing some things in your life. There's some things you need to put away. Don't start trying to um, be slick. Don't try to be technical and say, well, real, I stopped doing it. And really, truly, I'm not doing this. I'm just doing, no, you're still being a slickster. You're still allowing Satan to convince you that a little bit's okay. Well, it's okay if I look, as long as I don't touch. No, God says, if you sin in your heart, just the thought of it, and you get to think in your heart, you think you want to do it, and you play that thing out over and over, you sinned. And so God is saying, turn from those things. Stop allowing yourself to think that you can get away with things. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Get rid of those things. Get rid of that old way of thinking, that old way of living, and follow what God has to say. Allow God to create in you a clean heart and renew the right spirit in you. Look what he says. Not only should you cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, all those things that you've done that were wrong. And then he says, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Why would you just choose to die? Because see, somebody's going to tell you that, well, uh, 
this is the only life. There's, there's no life after. So I'm going to get all the gusto I can right now where they've lied to you. Because Jesus has rose from the dead, and we know that it's documented in the scriptures, that, and not only just in the scriptures, but in some of the other uh, old te uh, uh, test, text from the past uh, in the biblical li literature. And so we know that if we would just put away all of our sinful acts and turn to God, guess what? God will create in us a clean heart and a new spirit. Yes, when you, you give it away, how do, how do you, it says, and make you a new heart. How do you make that new heart? Because you, you can't do it in and of yourself. You know that. It's when you start reading God's word and you allow Jesus into your heart that you accept him as your Lord and Savior. Then you start following his statutes, his precepts and principles, and do what is right. That's how you make yourself a clean heart. Because now you don't, you don't get, when you, people make you mad, you don't get angry and, and lash out at them. When somebody's telling you something juicy, you're not listening to it, and, or if you hear it, you're not spreading it around about somebody else and what you heard about somebody else. When somebody's left some money around, you're not just going to go out there and take it. Somebody drops some money, you're going to pick it up and say, hey, here's your, and this, this was yours, it fell out your pocket. And you're going to give it back to them. You're going to turn from your ways and live. And when you turn and live, that's when you know you have eternity. You need to experience the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is, is there for you. He says, for I have no pleasure in death of him that dies, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. And that's the message we have for you today. Turn and live. Repent. That's all repentance really is, is turning from sin and turning to God. You don't have to worry about step one, step two, just stop doing it and go and seek God. That's, that's, the, that's what you need to do. Don't worry about all the other things. God will strengthen you. His Holy Spirit will come along and comfort you and give you guidance. And God will put people in your path and in your life to give you good counsel. But God says, cast away from you all your transgressions and, and choose to live. Do you really want life today? The only reason our sins are so easily forgiven <laughs> is because Jesus paid our sin debt. Aren't you glad that someone took care of what you could not do? Have you ever been in a situation when you had you you're trying to buy something and all of a sudden, uh oh, I went over. I got to take this off the basket, take that back. I can't get that because I don't have it. And you really know you really need it. And don't it good if someone came along and just said, oh no, no, put that back in there, and and I'm going to take care of that. Well, something even greater than that happened for us over two thousand years ago. Jesus paid our sin debt on Calvary's cross. God accepted Jesus's payment, and now we have full access to all God has for us. Don't you want to live out the plans that God has for you? Don't you want to live a successful and prosperous life? No, it may not be uh, uh, living as, su as successful as Oprah Winfrey. No, and then may maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe you're not living like Tyler Perry or Bill Gates or, or whatever. And that's great that those people were able to accomplish those things. But guess what? God has something great for you in your life. You just have to be able to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're saying, thank you for the payment that was made. I accept the gift and I'm accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. All we have to do is accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And, and the payment, will you'll hear that cash register go cha-ching. And that's the payment that has been made. It's already been made, but you're just going to hear the cash register ring when you give your life to Jesus. Just turn and live and accept all that God has for you. God wants everyone to live in eternity, but the choice is yours. Why don't you turn and live? Repentance is turning. And it's not turning 90 degrees. It's not turning 106 degrees. It's turning 180 degrees from your sin and going straight to the source of your help. And that's through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given by our Heavenly Father. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. If you are out there right now and still living in your sins, then you have the opportunity right now 
to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Just put your name in, in the comment section here on Facebook Live or those watching it later, uh, put it in the comment section or even on YouTube, put it in the comment section. We'll be checking that. Uh, or you can get in touch with me if you don't want to put your name on the in, in the uh, over the internet. Uh, just put it in there and let us know that you've ex accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You can contact me at Pastor New Beginnings H O W at gmail.com. That's Pastor New Beginnings H O W at gmail.com. Maybe you've already given your life to the Lord, and maybe you're struggling with some things in your life today, and you're saying, you know, I, I've got to get back on track. I've got to get back on track so I can live out the plans that God has for me. Then you can rededicate your life. Put your name in the comment section of well and say, I want to rededicate my life. Can con or contact me at Pastor New Beginnings, H O W, at gmail.com. Or you can just simply leave me a text message or a voice message at 615-473-5464. 615-473-5464. If you'd like to give to this ministry, we'd love to receive your gifts of love. You can go, uh, give through givelify.com. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y.com. Just if, download the app. If you don't want to download it, it's a simple process. But if you don't want to download it, you can just go to givelify.com. <clears throat> click on Give or Donate. And look for our location. We are New Beginnings House of Worship at 3919 Kings Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37218. That's New Beginnings House of Worship, 3919 Kings Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37218. Just click there and, and, and give and click on donate and give whatever you love. We have uh, two scholarship recipients this year and you'll be hearing more about them as we finalize. The, we have one finalized. We have one more to finalize a few things. Uh, we're giving, they've received a thousand dollar scholarships and we, it's our hope and prayer that we're able to give them a thousand dollars for the next four years for their college uh, efforts. And so we loved your assistance. If you'd like to give to our scholarship, uh, you can specifically you can put on your gift for scholarship, Seeds of Hope Scholarship, Seeds of Hope Scholarship. You can donate to that as well. And so we just thank you and encourage you and the Lord in all that you're attempting to do. Uh, and so uh, we just thank you for being here today, and we encourage you to be with us in our Bible studies on Saturday at the 12 o'clock hour for New Beginnings and our moment in the Word. If there are things that are issues that are going on in your life that maybe you uh, have questions about, maybe we haven't talked about the things or preached a message or even in our Bible study, you can contact us again at Pastor New Beginnings H O W at gmail.com. Or just simply leave us a comment on Facebook or post a comment about something here at New Beginnings, and we will uh, get with you. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. And we ask that you would continue to lift up all those that are going through. Uh, remember, COVID is still out there. And so be careful in, in group congregations and, and things of that nature where you congregate um, and if you feel any symptoms, go on and get yourself checked out. Get, get vaccinated if you believe so uh, to, to keep you. That's one of the best things that could help you. Uh, you know, I have to get my new vaccine. Um, and so uh, we encourage you to do that. Get out and vote. Those of you that are of, of, of age now, uh, get out there and register to vote. Make sure that you vote and do what is right so that we can all live lawful and and righteous lives by following God's precepts and those that are in authority. Amen. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer.